Hi, this is Randy from Fried Eggs Golf, and welcome to the PGA Championship edition of Over Easy. I have to admit, not until three days ago did I even realize that the PGA Championship was being played this week. Uh, I know that's kind of embarrassing, but it just seems too soon. The, the, the Open Championship seemed like last weekend. It doesn't feel like it should be another major championship, but it is, and here we are. And uh, for those of you who do follow me on Twitter, that's at Fried Eggs Golf, I sent out a question earlier this morning letting you know I was recording this, and I asked for you to send me some questions, and I realized I didn't give a whole lot of notice because, as I admitted earlier, I forgot all about this championship. Now, that's not to say that it's not fun for me to watch. I love watching all the majors. It just so happens the PGA, for whatever reason, it just doesn't hold the same value to me as like the US Open or the Open Championship, and especially not the Masters, but I still watch every second of the broadcast and have since I've started watching golf. But it just it doesn't feel... I mean, it feels like a major, but it doesn't have the excitement and the buildup as you get with the other major championships. But let's go over to Twitter, and I'm going to read some of the comments that were uh, posted uh, after I, I claimed I was shooting this episode and, and wanted the, you know some questions and some uh, comments on the Open Championship. Uh, Stin wrote, Friday's Golf, what do you think of Baltus Roll? Have you ever played it? How many clubs will be snapped this week? I don't know how many clubs would be snapped, and no, I've never played Baltus Roll, and all I knew about this course going into it was that it was in Jersey, and it was East Coast, and I, outside of that, really no prior knowledge to this. Now, I did uh, look up uh, on the PJ's website and went through the, the scorecard, playing over 7,400 yards. That is monstrous, and it, it doesn't anger me, but... It's kind of disappointing because when you think about what major championship golf is all about, it's about the player who can step up and who can rise to the challenge and who can perform and play uh, better than anyone that weekend and, and, and take home a major championship. When you play a course at 7,400 yards, you eliminate a lot of good players that can't necessarily hit the ball as far as what these guys are hitting it nowadays. When you have Dustin Johnson and Bubba Watson and Jason Day and Roy McIlroy that carry the ball 315, 320 in the air, it, it gives them an advantage over half of the field when you're playing par fours that are 500 yards. Because even if you hit the ball 280 yards off the tee, which is seemingly quite a bit. And I mean, on average, you're right around 290 on the PGA Tour, meaning uh, quite a few guys hit it less than 290. So when you're hitting a golf ball 290 yards and you still have 215, 220 into a hole, and especially in a major championship where you have long, rough, hard greens, it, you're just not going to hold a lot of uh, greens and be able to reach tuck pins when you're hitting five and four irons in there where... Rory and uh, Dustin Johnson are hitting eight irons and nine irons. So I don't like the idea of stretching a golf course out to make it difficult because I think that it only makes it difficult for a few guys because, like as I, I just explained, when you can hit it that far, you can have 500-yard par fours and, and still you know very easily get there uh, with a driver, eight iron, driver, nine iron. And I just don't like to see 220-yard par threes. I, don't, I hate seeing... 650 yard par fives, which I was looking at the scorecard here. Number 17, 649 yards. I mean, uh, it just, it, it kind of loses the whole golf feel to me, the whole vibe. And I don't, I don't appreciate watching that kind of golf. I would rather tune in to like St. Andrews where it's not long at all. And guys like Zach Johnson win who don't hit the ball particularly far, but they have a good wedge game and they have a good strategy and they play the course well. And I love seeing that kind of challenge where it's the best be the best and, and let them go out and play their best game and, and see who wins. I, I hate it when they these course designers and the PGA take offense to guys shooting 22 under. Like, I, I don't care if that guy can shoot 22 under on a course that's that difficult. Let him do it. You don't have to make par fours 490 yards, 500 yards to make them tough. If, if they can hit the ball down the middle, in the middle of the green, and make a putt, I mean, that, hats off. That's good. That's good for the game, too. I, it, but I, I like a different kind of golf, I, I guess, than, and, than probably most people do. But I, I guess I'm kind of rambling now, so... Wow, I hope they don't all take that long to answer. But uh, Travis Lazenby, uh, I would love to see you out there interviewing golfers, kind of a new age Faraday. 
it would be cool. It would be cool to go out to um, more tournaments and, and be uh, you know be able to talk to players and be able to interview them on the range. I think I'm a ways away from that as it stands right now, but maybe in the future that would be fun. Matt Ondecker. It seems like the PGA Championship is getting a bit overlooked this year, being between the Open and the Olympics. Thoughts? Matt, I completely agree, because my thoughts after the Open uh, Championship was over was, it seemed like they were focused more on the Olympics. I saw more advertisements for the Olympics. I really didn't see any, I mean, I, I don't watch the Golf Channel religiously, but I didn't see or hear any other advertisements for the PGA Championship, so that's probably why I didn't know it was coming that. And uh, it just, it, the buildup and all the hype around players dropping out of the Olympics, it seemed to have overshadowed the, the PGA, and I, I completely agree. I I think it has been kind of as covered up and, and not as, as focused on as it has been in years past, just because of the excitement and the hype up around the, the Olympics and what they're trying to do there. Because I think after this weekend, I think it's next week the Olympics start. So it's like bam, 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 and then you have to start the, the the FedEx Cup, the Tour Championship, and everything like that. So it's all one right after another. So we're pretty action-packed as, as far as golf goes. Mike Reeder, last one, by the way. Mike Reeder, uh, do you ever see a major coming to Beverly's Hills? Whoop, whoop. Mike, you're trolling me, and I love it. But no, I, uh, at what I do see, maybe we can work this out. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of winging this off the top of my head. Maybe we can start like a YouTube tour. And I think we could get Beverly Hills on the circuit there. That could be one of the, one of the major championship spots. So you have all your golfers on YouTube, all your YouTube golf channels, and we start a golf tour where we go around and we, we play courses. I think that we could work that out, and Beverly Hills could be a stop. Let's do it. Let's see if we can make that happen. So I know this is, uh, I've been kind of been rambling on and kind of giving you my two cents on the PGA Championship, but I am giddy like a schoolgirl to watch it. I, I admit that I'm very excited, and I do want to give you my two cents as far as who I think will win. And it may seem boring and it may seem redundant, but I feel like Rory McIlroy will win. And I don't know why. I don't know why I had that feeling. It's kind of the same as going to the Open Championship. I feel like he's teetering on that edge of being the player that he was a couple years ago. Because it wasn't long ago where that guy was unmistakably the most... Unmistakably? Un he was definitely the best golfer on the planet. And no one would have argued against that. But it's crazy that when Spieth comes in there and he wins a couple, and, and Day comes in and takes over at number one, everyone kind of forgot about Rory. And he is not one... I think that you should forget because he's a very solid player and I think he still, when he plays at his best, is nearly unbeatable. I don't know if he's necessarily playing at his best right now, but he ha he struggled uh, on the back nine in the Open Championship and I think that he could have been in contention if he could have somehow strung together uh, you know, a couple even par rounds on that backside, which is easier said than done, but he still finished uh, top five. And I think that it kind of maybe lit a spark under him. You saw him break his fairway wood. I know that's frustrating. And I, I know that he was probably a little upset with his performance. But I think he takes that and he turns it into a victory at the PGA. I think he comes back and I think that he wins the PGA Championship. I think that Jason Day uh, would be a solid pick because I really think this is a bomber's course. I don't care what or how these guys tried to build it up. I can see like Bubba Watson winning this as well if he's hitting uh, you know, the driver well. But it, you, can, you can try to play this any way you want and say, oh, Randy, you know, everyone's got a, a fair chance. I really think that a guy that wins this is a guy that averages over 300 yards off the tee. I think it's Dustin Johnson. I think it's uh, Jason Day, Roy McIlroy. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's Jordan Spieth. I, I just I don't think that this is, this is one that he wins um, if you're watching this after the championship and he's won this. I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it seem like he wasn't going to win. But I think that Roy McIlroy will win the 2016 PGA Championship, and I think it's because he hits it so far and so high, and I think he's going to outplay the other Bombers. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to jump back into uh, regular questions that we ask. I have one more page left, and I just want to finish these up. Uh, so uh, we're just going to let it run until I get through these questions here. 
But before I do, comment section, as always, I love reading your guys' predictions and what you think the winning score is going to be, who you think the winning player is going to be, why you think it's not going to be Rory, or why you think it's going to be Rory. Whatever it is, I love to read the comments. I love interacting with you guys in the comment section. So please Pack that thing full of your predictions and winning scores, and I definitely will mention you. If you pick the winning golfer, even if there's 50 of you, I will read all of your names and say that you're all geniuses if you pick the right person. So put it down below, and uh, we will revisit it on next week's episode, and we'll talk about it. Dave Bossy, going into the questions now. That was a rough transition. Dave Bossy, hey Randy, I've always used a range finder, but it's recently gotten stolen. I'm thinking about trying a GPS unit instead. Any recommendations? Uh, I don't really have any specific recommendations when it comes to GPS because I don't have much experience with them. I typically use laser range finder. I use a Bushnell personally, and I don't really, I don't like the idea of having to charge a GPS or being dependent on the weather or my location on the course or the signal being strong enough for it to update or give me accurate yardage, but they're very convenient. They update themselves as far as the holes. You can enter your score into them, so I would look into one like uh, I think Golf Buddy makes a really good unit for a decent price because you can spend a lot on these and in, in, in very quickly. But there seems to be that watch units are very popular. I don't know if that's just because you don't want to put them in your pockets or you don't want to lose them and, and put them in the cart or anything like that. But uh, Sky Caddy watches, uh, Garmin watches, Golf Buddy watches, they all seem to be very popular. So I would check out the watch situation and see if uh, you feel comfortable playing golf with a watch on. If you do, that might be the route to go. So give it a give it a try. Sir Big Spur 06. Is there a way to get fit for clubs without costing an arm and a leg? All I hear from everyone is get fit and the benefits of having fitted clubs. But you go to a fitter and they only fit you into the newest model of OEM clubs. It's not like you can go get fit for last uh, season's irons. So unless I'm willing to pay $150 for a fit and then another $800 for a custom order irons, is it possible to walk out of an iron fitting without dropping at least a grand? Yes. And this is different, uh, I think, from retailer to retailer because the way that we work in our retail business and the way that we seem, it seems to be fair is that it doesn't cost us as manufacturers any more money to purchase a custom set of irons as it does to purchase a stock set of irons. I don't know if I'm spilling the beans there or opening in, uh, you know, a door I shouldn't, but that just seems fair to let you guys know. It doesn't cost the retailer any more to order them custom or to order them stock. It's just a matter of buying them more in stock and you get a little discount on the shipping because they're all going in the same box, but it's not anything dramatic uh, that you know would make that big of a difference. So right off the bat, we don't charge extra for custom fitting if the irons are purchased that day from us. So if a guy comes in, gets fit for irons, uh, yeah, he'll pay $100 to get fit, but if he goes if he go ahead if he goes ahead and purchases those irons, we immediately waive the fitting fee and we order the irons up just as we were to order a stock set. So yeah, you can easily buy a set of clubs for under a grand. And I imagine there's other retailers out there adopting this kind of aspect. Now, if you're getting really in depth as far as with a TrackMan fitting, or you know you're wearing some devices and stuff like that, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pay extra for that fitting, and it would probably get very expensive very fast. But if you're just going into like a you know, an everyday retail shop, uh, even a chain store, you should be able to get a, a custom fitting for free when you order the clubs, and, and there should be no extra cost to that. Now, having said that, it's still expensive. You'll still spend, you know, eight to nine hundred dollars for a custom set of irons that are this year's model. Now, you you did mention previous year's uh, model sets. Ping is an excellent manufacturer to take into consideration because you can buy last year's uh, Ping series irons. And you can get them custom fit, and you can and you can actually order them through Ping, and they're at a discounted price. And I believe right now it's the G30s because the Gs came out. You can order the the G30s, but typically in years past you'd have like the G25s and the G20s of the year previous, and you could order those up custom fit, no extra cost, no extra charge, and they'll ship them right to you. And you go through the same fitting process we do with the new current models. So that's something to look into, and also. Uh, I, I don't mean to throw out you know specific manufacturers, but Tour Edge Golf is an excellent manufacturer when it comes to getting quality equipment uh, fit uh, custom for no extra charge. I think their irons, their hot launch irons that are out right now, they start at like 399 
and you can get those custom fit with like KBS or Project X shafts in them and uh, like Dynamic Gold. I'm not sure about the Project X, but you can get those custom fit with different shafts in them at no extra charge and at $399. So there's definitely options out there. I recommend you go in and explore what else is there, but definitely check out Ping, check out Tour Edge, and you can easily walk out with a set under $1,000. Deuce 2, I find myself pulling putts with a standard off the rack putter, blade putter. Do you think flattening a putter two degrees will help? They seem to be all about the same 70 to 72 degree line angle. Yeah, two things. Uh, I mean, if you're flattening a putter to help you, it seems like you're, you're pulling putts. Flattening a putter will help you, I, I guess, pull the, the ball less. Now, a lot of pulling a ball uh, has to do with your, your stroke type, and, and maybe you're a little bit more outside to in, and maybe a little less offset on the putter. So if you have a plumber neck like that, that comes across the putter head, uh, maybe go into like more of a mid slant where only half the shaft sticks out in front of the putter face as opposed to the whole shaft. Because more offset you have on the putter, typically it's gonna be more for a guy that swings from inside to out and maybe pushes putts as a mess. That offset will, will help that person out much more. But yeah, flattening, it, flattening a putter as well will make the putts uh, I guess air more to the right as opposed to, to pulling it. So I would uh, I would try maybe switching up the style of head before you go ahead and bend it and just see if you putt better with a, a putter with less offset on it. Andrew McKenzie, do tour pros help each other out as in sharing club selection or line on putts, etc.? By the way, I love your channel. Keep it up. Well, thank you, Andrew. And no, I don't believe they would ever do that. Uh in a practice round, I'm assuming, because actually in a playing round, you can't solicit shot advice. You can't give another player advice on how to play a shot or to ask information from another player to how to hit a shot because that actually you incur a penalty. But I don't think pros are too much into helping each other out. Now, I know in the off season or maybe in practice rounds, uh, you've heard stories of like Steve Stricker helping Tiger out with his putting. Yeah, stuff like that goes on all the time, I'm sure, that you know help guys work through problems or, or give them advice or give them tips and, and, and maybe better that way. But you have to think you're, you, you don't want to better your competition and give them a more likely chance to beat you. So it's, it's all about, you know, performing and trying to win each week. And it makes that harder if you're, you're giving the competition edge by giving them information that maybe you're privileged to. Privileged to. Can't talk today. Uh, Tyler Guten, Geerton. Hi, Randy. I'm in the market for a new three wood. I don't have one in the bag, and I never had one before. I have a hybrid, and I love to, and I'd love to get 230 yards out of it. The driver is at 290 yard ish, but struggling to keep it consistently in the fairway. That being said, I could really use a club that could get more distance out of while hitting many fairways with a 115 mile an hour swing speed. Is there a model of three wood that caters to higher swing speeds? Uh, yeah, I think that at that swing speed, you're going to want to probably play a lower spinning model. Uh, you know, it, it just depends on the manufacturer go, you go into, but like a pro model head in a Callaway or the M1, uh, M2 style in the TaylorMade, uh, typically something that when it hits the ball, it's going to spin less because when you swing a club over 110 miles an hour, Typically, overspin is the problem, and it's where we see a lot of depletion and distance. So I would go for something that's a little bit smaller CC head, and the center of gravity is a little bit more forward in the face to, to give you a little bit lower launch, lower spin. Try that out. Roll Tide says, hey, Randy, does do today's wedges have higher spin rates than the Ping I-2 square grooves that were banned? No, I wouldn't think they would out of, off the fairway, I don't think there would be a tremendous difference between the two because there's still some fairly aggressive wedge grooves out there. Now, obviously, they're limited to the width and depth and the type of grooves there are, but you see a lot more face texturing now, which is uh, interacting with the ball on a little bit lower speeds on 50-yard shots and stuff like that. But undoubtedly, box grooves wedges spun the most, and you could hit those out of the rough and still get the ball to check up and you just you don't see that anymore with uh, tour pros when they when they get the ball in the rough or even the intermediate rough the ball will hit and typically release because you just can't get the debris and the grass cleared away uh, out of the grooves to be able to get the sharp edge of the groove on the ball as you were with the box grooves because they were so much wider so much deeper so much sharper 
that uh, a lot of times they would even damage, you know, the softer urethane or even back then balata balls because the grooves were so sharp they would cut into the ball because it would spin it so much. So, no, unfortunately, that's uh, box grooves are really, uh, you're just not ever going to find a wedge, at least not now that spins as much as they did. Now, they're getting better and they're getting closer, but they're just, they're going to get to the point where they're going to have to limit how much texturing they can add to the face and what they're doing now to increase spin. So, uh, no, not yet. Um, ooh, one more question, last one. Uh, Matt Virgo. Randy, do you have any intention of doing any instructional pieces on your channel? I don't think so. I've stayed away from it this... Well, so far I've stayed away from it, but I, I wouldn't feel right posting instructional video when I'm not a certified teaching pro. I don't feel like my methodology is really that sound. I think a lot of my stuff is just more feel, the way that I approach the game and the way I play and the way I interpret golf swings. I don't think that I would be able to relay that message clearly uh, enough to be able to give an instructional video. I, I, I've thought about it, and I'm not ruling it out completely, but as it sits now, I think I'm just going to stick to just funny videos and, and the every now and then club reviews. So uh, that's it. I'm out of questions. I do have quite a few more questions I, I, I don't have on that piece of paper, but if you have any more questions, put them down in the comment section below. As usual, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video if you liked it, and do not forget to put your predictions for the PGA Championship in the, in the comment section below. And let me know who you think is going to win, because I think it's going to be Roy McIlroy. And I'm just going to keep saying Roy McIlroy until he wins his next major. So Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later.